Welcome everybody. Today we are going to be going through the management side of the Dr. Smash. As you are aware, we have already done productivity and our paint import in a previous um, session, so we won't be covering those today. The videos are available on our YouTube site and on our website itself, so you can go watch those if you're interested. Uh, today will be more the profit projections, admin monitors, your reports that are throughout the program, and just giving you a general overview of how, as a manager, you can monitor your shop. So without further ado, let's go over to Christine. Today is mostly for the boss's day today. Um, as a boss, what is the sort of information that you will be wanting to look at in Dr. Smash to be able to see that everybody is doing their work and what is actually going on? All right, so I'm going to actually start with our quoting. We go to our make view print quote. What we do is um, we put it actually into our status order and we look to see how many making quotes there actually is on our list. There should not be that many making quotes because making quote means that your quota has started it but has not finished that quote as yet. So you should not have that many actually on this list. Also, to make a job, there should not be that many actually on your list either because that means for some reason they have not actually made the job card as yet. All right, so those first two points. Then we go to our show follow-up colors and we are looking for anything that is in red. Anything in red means that your quotas have not been following up on this particular um, quote. And yeah, so you know that your follow-ups are not actually being done. Staying with our quoting side of things, we're going to go to our quote reports. And we're going to do an overall quote productivity. All right, we want our date is going to be that's fine. Actually, let's do it for the whole of November. Right, you go through your list, and this is now showing you a list of all of the quotes that you have actually done. And at the bottom, it has now told us that we made 78 quotes, of which 28 of them turned into job cards so therefore only about a third one out of every three of our quotes are actually being turned into jobs and on value wise we are actually only turning over about 20 percent so that's not a very good statistic at this point in time for um, our company so you can now go through and start having to a look at your individual quote productivity. All right, we go through, uh, we're going to choose Rochelle, um, we're going to set her up for uh, November. And we have a look at Rochelle. And we can have it see these are all the quotes that Rochelle and only Rochelle did for the month of November. She made 22 quotes, but only two of them became job cards. So therefore, her productivity is actually one in every 10 of her quotes are actually being um, turned over. It's only on about 9%. So that could be one of your problem. Uh, quotas. You can also go through every single one of your quotas and see what the productivity ratios actually are. We also have our strike rate report. Let's go to print it. Um, we choose our November. All right, uh, I'm going to do an overview report. Uh, send it to the screen and basically what it's now coming up with is it's now looking at your whole shop not by per quota or anything like that but per day 
it's on this particular day we made 12 quotes um so um these are actually adding up all of the quotes throughout the, the month right and then these are the values that we've actually made how many of them became jobs and so you can actually now get your values per day so that you can actually start to look and see which days are your busiest quoting days when do most of your job cards actually get made and you can start looking and seeing um, seeing if there's any patterns actually forming as, as we're going through. So that is what our strike rate report is actually all about. All right, so you can see that there's quite a few different reports you can actually do for unjobbed quotes. Um, these ones here are for the ones that have become jobs. You can do follow-ups. Uh, you can get Rochelle to actually print out a list of all of her quotes that have not become job cards. Uh, so that she can do follow-ups on them. There's different types of reports. And you see there's, here is that marketing referred report. That is, remember when we did defaults, the very first training session that we did, we said we can actually print out a report and that will show you um, where all these quotes have actually been referred from, that type of thing. So you can actually print out those reports here as well. Right, so that is our quoting side of things. So as long as your quotas are actually keeping the making quote and their to be jobbed statuses as small as possible, they are actually doing their work and they're doing their quote follow-ups by keeping those um, colors from being red. We then go on to our stores side of things. So if you go into stores, purchasing, purchase for a job. This will be now be a list of all the jobs that still require parts to be bought on it. So if your buyer is actually doing his job, this should be a list that is as empty as possible. In this case, we have these green ones are, um, the, those jobs are actually in the workshop. And these white ones are booked in cars that we are sorting out. So the computer will tell you what are your booked in cars and what are actually on your shop floor and what you're still needing to be bought. So your buyer should be keeping this list as empty as possible. And you now know that his orders are actually up to date. Also, on your stores side of things, receiving ordered parts, this list that's coming up here now should be as empty as possible because there are orders waiting to actually, uh, for spares to actually come in. We should not be having um, old um, jobs on here at all. If I go back, we'll see that there's um, old files actually on here. So this should be as empty as possible. If it is an old order date, it should actually be in yellow, telling you that it is an X factory. But you, this is your way of keeping track that people are purchasing the parts properly for the system. Uh, the other thing under your stores is your extras um, authorizations. This list should also be as empty as possible. It is a list of every single extra that has not actually got its authorization as yet. So here again, your quotas and things should actually be keeping this list as empty as possible. We should not be having 831 extras waiting to actually be authorized. It should be um, clear. Right, so there's a lot of these ones here that, that are 15 and 2017 and things like that, that are on the system. Dr. Smash can help you to clean up your old data so that you can start again from fresh. All we require is that you just phone into the office and we will actually teach you and show you how to actually clean up your data for you. All right. 
um, as a boss, the other two bits of information that you would that you want to know is your most important is your batch queries, debtors batch queries at the beginning of the month. That is how much money you were actually owed. These, this is what you have invoiced out so far. Your debit notes, credit notes, and receipts that you've done. So therefore, that is actually what is owing to you at this point in time. And then this figure here is in this particular month, your invoices minus your credit notes will give you what your total sales actually are for this particular month. Right, we work on XVAT because Dr. Smash always says VAT is not your money. Right, so that is your total sales that you've done for the month and what people actually owe you at this point. So we can close that down. We go to the opposite end of the scale. We're going to go to into our creditors, month's purchase summary. And here is a list of all of our creditors and how much money we actually owe our creditors at this point. Uh, if I go to our Harmon that we did throughout the week, there is our invoices for Harmon and it tells me what that particular supplier actually had. Right, on this particular one, um, we have got our used suppliers set to cash ticked. So if we untick that, that is how much we actually owe our suppliers at this particular point. They, uh, they are set as a creditor, what we actually owe them. Right, so that are your, um, just your basics as a boss as to what you're actually wanting to require. So now you're wanting to start setting targets and things like that on your system so that you can now tell your staff how much and what you're wanting out of them. The first place we're going to go to uh, is your work in, your work in listing and targets. This work in listing can either be obtained by going to this button here or under your jobs and quotes, you go to work in listing and targets and it pulls up the exact same screen. What is this screen? This is a list of in the month of November, because that's what the month that this computer is actually in. At the beginning of the month, we carried across all of our open jobs and that's where our jobs carried forward is actually coming from. All the unclosed jobs have actually now come forward. And if we go to the end of the list, you will now see all the jobs that have been made in the month of November. Right, at the bottom here, all the ones that have been made in November of those totals, 51,000 is actually been our spares, our labor, it actually will, that figure, the agreed cost of repairs, is made up of spares and labor. And that is where the computer is getting those figures from. So it's telling you that so far this month, we have bought in 400,000. The 377 is our work in progress, plus our cars that have been booked in at the bottom here. The two together add up to your 377.541. So, work in progress is a list of all your current jobs, all the jobs you have not closed down will be carried forward as work in progress. So, that is where the computer gets those figures from. So, that is also why we say, Closing of your job is actually very important because otherwise it will throw your work in progress out. Sometimes when you are doing your month end, you get a screen that actually pops up and says this job and it asks you what department it is actually in. The reason for that is the computer is working at your current jobs and it is looking at your monitors. If it does not find that particular current job actually on the monitor, 
it now does not know what department that car is actually in because your monitor would tell them what department is actually in. If it's not on the monitor, it doesn't know. So it's now asking you to put it in manually as to where that car actually is. So in theory, you should not be getting any um, of those manual um, department updates to actually be putting into your month end because if the car is finished, you should be closed on your current work in or if the car is actually completed that's what you would do is on the manual you'd now just go in and say it is actually in the completed area it's gone through it has been delivered it is now completed right okay so our work in progress what we're wanting to do is we're now going to set a target for our um our quota is in the top section to here is just a asking you when does your month start so we go when to our set end. targets when what you can either figure, be calculated do you or basic want basic so very simple 2.5 million and you tap in it then says month your ba uh, balance you are uh, your work carried forward on OK save is actually and added and our figures that. will now change and then in the month to, your that default that you actually have actually we have set that at the right. end our of the uh, month, target. we're saying that about 31% of our money will not actually be invoiced out. So the computer has worked out that it's about 775,000 won't actually be invoiced out. So to be able to make our invoice um, target of 2.5 million, we actually need to bring in 2.8 million actually onto um into our work in progress at the back here there are 21 working days actually in november that we had set here so therefore our daily target is 137,000 um for our daily target of that 137,000 we are saying that 53% of it is going to be for labor. So our labor target is actually going to be 73,000. So we say, okay, save the targets. And that is actually what is now written up on here. Your target total plus your total work available minus your booked in figure comes to about that um, um, that 2.5 million that you were actually asking for. Right, so that's what we need to get in. That is what we have got. So therefore, we are nowhere near our target. We still need to bring in that. So that is what this is the differences in your target between your target and what you have actually bought in. Our daily target, there it is there. And we are on day 15 of our uh, daily targets. So the computer is just letting you know that as you start going through, like when we come through tomorrow, our daily target will actually have changed. It will increase because you now need to bring in more money to be able to reach that target. So every day that you come in, that daily target is either increasing or decreasing. Right. And also against our set targets, we have our advanced. This is so that you can look back at old data. Right, so we are going to say that from March, um, March 2019, we want to have a look at all the targets that was going on. So we click on calculate. 
and the computer will now go through and it will take from March right through to November and give us all the figures that we have um, we have in our system. This is what our target was. If I go to the printer on the side, it now tells you, it will break it down, that these are what our targets were throughout each month. And it's added it up for us, added on today's target. So that's what our grand total has actually been for all of our targets. What did we actually physically get in? And then therefore that is what the differences actually are. And then it also breaks it down into labor. This is what your labor targets actually were. This is what you actually got in for labor. So that's your differences for your labor at this point in time. And then it also just tells you at this point, what is your booked in, what's available booked in. Right, so that's what your advanced screen is actually all about. You can look up over the last couple of months and see what is actually going on. Right, we need to set our targets before we can actually go into a profit projection because profit projection is um, a continuation of setting of your targets. Once you have your target, what is my projected profit actually going to be for this particular month? So we have now set our targets so we can close this window down. And we're now going to move over to the next section. But before I go into profit projection, let's actually go to this work in progress, work in progress listing. Right, um, I want to have a look at my October. Right, in October, this is a list of all the cars that were physically in my shop, not booked in cars. These were the ones that were physically in my shop. And then according to the monitor or your manual input of where the departments actually were, it is now going through and actually working out what, what's actually happening. All right, so if we have a look at this Ford Everest, Strip and assemble, strip and assemble. So was, you were given that amount of money for it. That's your, um, what you were allowed. Actual is because it has finished with assembly already, it has allocated the assembly money to your work in progress. It is you not mean strip there, Chris. Oh, it's gone sorry. through the strip department, so your strip value has been um, allocated there. Right, yes, sorry, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right, panel beating, it's gone through the panel beating department, it is finished in the panel beating department, so the full money has been allocated against that. And it is still in our paint department, so it is allocated according to the time, time that it has actually been in the paint, it is still actually, uh, it has put some money against it, depending on how long it's been and how long it's still got to actually go. So it, there again, it is looking back at our schedule that we did on those particular jobs, right back at when we uh, first made our job card. Right. Our parts, we were allowed to actually spend this much money, but we haven't spent a cent yet on buying any of these parts for this job. So that is how your work in progress is actually worked out. Um, if we do this 186 plus our booked in of 155, we come to about our three, um, I think it was about 377 that we actually had for our opening balance. Uh, our opening uh, jobs carried forward for the month of November. You can at any stage go through and get any accounting month and look at what your previous months and things like that actually were. And you can obviously print this all out as well if you need to. Right, so that's your work in progress and how Dr. Smash does your work in progresses for you. 
So let's now go into our profit projection. Right, it's a big screen with lots of figures and things like that actually coming at you. Um, it's actually not that hard to actually do. But the one thing we first had to go and set, and that is our invoice work to come, our defaults. Right, what this is actually saying is that of the work that we say that we are going to be getting in, um on the last day if we get a job in 10 percent of that job will not actually be invoiced um uh, no will be invoiced out sorry it will only 10 percent of any work that came in on the last day will actually get invoiced out so essentially um, this screen here is you're trying to set your average job size almost so if your average job size is in this case they have a nine day cycle that they seem to average to so in nine days they would more than likely have finished that job if it's been booked in or if it's um, on the shop floor because they've got to a hundred percent by the end of nine days so you generally trying to set this to what your average job length would be um, within that 11 day period. Am I right in understanding that, Chris, from what I can see yes. on the screen? Yes, yeah. Cool. Right, so that's what you are actually setting. So when we come through just now to ask how much is actually going to be invoiced out for the rest of the month, this is where the computer is actually getting its information from. So let's click on OK, save the record. Right. The other set of piece of information that we need to actually set is of that two and a half million rand target that we've set, how much do we actually believe our staff are actually going to get in? Are they going to get in the full two and a half thousand? Are they actually only going to get in 90% of it? If that is the case, you change that to 90% because you don't quite believe they're going to hit target. Uh, this is where you can start manipulating. You've asked them for two and a half, but you don't expect two and a half actually in. Right, um, of your work in progress, you expect about 31% to be left in your shop, um, shop to be carried over to the following month. So it's using that figure to come through. So, right. Um, it is pulled through figures throughout the program, um, like your work carried forward and uh, what your month, um, your month's work and work to date is and that type of thing. So our total that of work that is actually available is about 1.7, but let's actually calculate it, right? It's actually about 1.6 because we brought it down to 90%. So I just wanted to show you how that figure changed because it was no longer set at 100 it's now been set at 90. right what have we invoiced out so far this month minus any credit notes estimated of invoices from work and um, this one here is a button at the top here jobs that will be invoiced if i click on this this is now a listing of every single job on your shop floor that has not been invoiced out as yet. It has some colors. The red means that the, according to the schedule, this car will actually only be finished next month. Yellow means that it has actually been booked in, so it hasn't actually even arrived as yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, right, any red ones and any yellow ones, I am going to set it to, they will not be invoiced out. What I am trying to do here is, this is a list of all my uh, jobs. I'm now wanting to try and give my workshop foreman a list of jobs that he has to actually complete. 
if I think that, oh, hang on, I don't think he's going to get that one finished, I just drag it and drop it in not to be invoiced. Um, for I know that this particular one, the, um, the spares are on back order, so I'm just going to say that's not to be invoiced. And you will see that as I am dropping them in the not to be invoiced, it's leaving me with a figure of what is left to actually be invoiced at. Right. The ultimate aim of this profit projection is in your setting of your targets, you have now given your quotas a target that they have to actually meet. You are now on this list here, giving your workshop foreman a target of what he has to actually complete. So when we are finished, let's, we've now done this one and we say close the window, right? It has filled in our figures for us and it has gone through the system. It will, I've just clicked on calculate again so that it can finish calculating itself. Right. It is automatically put in all of our details for us. All of these figures are pulled through from the program. Um, and then obviously it just gives you some totals, like last month's work in progress, all pulled through from the actual program itself. Uh, less estimated expenses. Uh, I'm going to say it is about 39,000 Rand. I wish, don't we all? Right, um, but our payroll is about 286. Right, and calculate. And at this point, okay, I don't know what this other expense is, so I'm going to just zero it. Right, it's also saying that of your spares, 47% uh, of that is actually a work achieved, so that will be 47% will actually be part of your creditors. So it's um, uh, money, uh, your 15% of your consumables is of your work achieved. Uh, that is also expenses that you actually have. So therefore your profit and loss for the job, you're looking at, at this point, if my quotas get in the 2.5 million and my workshop foreman get out of that list of jobs, I should make at least 64,000 Rand profit on, the, on um, this month. Right, so when do you normally do profit projection? The profit projection, I would generally say, should be done within like the first seven days of the new month so that you can give people time to actually work towards their targets. You can keep coming in and checking to see if they are actually um, up to date with how you actually wanted the figures to actually be. Um, so you can keep checking and seeing how things are actually going by coming in and calculating your new profit and loss as per what the figures are right now. So. Essentially then, what Christine's saying is the monitor is for your workshop foreman to monitor every individual job and make sure that those schedules are correct. This screen allows you as a manager to now see the, is the business as a whole on the correct projection to get to the profit or loss, the L, obviously profit that you're looking for at the end of the month. And if it's not, you can now go make the adjustments or go try to find where the problems are coming from. Um, from the guys who are manu checking on each job. So this is the nice overview way of monitoring where your shop is going. Are you going to actually get to the target you've always you've been looking for? Right. Okay. Um, so that's profit projection. Right. Um, under our uh, management side of things, we also have one now called admin reports. Uh, admin reports is just a, 
At the moment, it is actually okay, only we go got a uh, daily Let's go through the in the admin module and the give in, them a I can actually look, look around there. If you can set your date you and you monitor. can find out what the going to the administration what monitor. job cards were made today, uh, just what orders were placed preview. today, what invoices There's were made today. There's also a booking today, monitor. What got booked in today for cars that are actually being booked, booked in, keeping so track of you them. Choose but I'm not showing you that one today. I'm just going to show you the administration monitor. So it's a nice way for you as the boss to actually see what is happening is a daily basis it on leaves your shop floor. your shop so you've taken it off of the monitor and you've started working um, on getting all the paperwork sorted out and all the rest of it as you are going through and doing these these things these should be a list a checklist of what you actually need to do to every single one of your jobs and that's what the admin monitor is actually all about. It has got broken down into different departments. And then for our reception, we are saying, right, in the file, have we put in the security checklist? Is the book and form on file? Is there a signed released form? Is the quality control check there? You write up. You can add your own questions. You can write up as many questions as you want for that particular department. If I go to my stores, what does my storeman supposed to do for this particular job file? He's got to make sure that there's two copies of the supplier invoices in the file. Everything is actually being processed on the PC, all the RFCs have been made. He's done all of his dealer sign-offs. You know, everything is actually, um, you write up your lists of what you actually want them to do. So you, as you can see, we go through each one of them and you have written up what their jobs are that they actually have to do. Right, you can get all the way down to your auditing, have you received a signed form from the assessor. Right, so that is your setting of your, what tasks actually need to be done. If we now go to our monitor, um, and our admin group tasks. Right, I'm just going to say no because um, it's just going to turn my faces uh, into red because my time schedule is not right. Uh, and it takes a while to actually go through and do that um, because I'm uh, looking at November data and we're actually in April. But anyway, right, so this is a list at the moment for the reception of the two cards that she has not worked on as yet. You will see that on the side here, that's your claim number um, and your claim number and the date the car was actually completed, actually shows up here. But under reception, we have two red faces because she has not done her work. If I go to our Borman that we have been using throughout the week, I double click on it. This is the list of jobs that she has, um, she's supposed to be doing, and what do we want to do about it? Well, yes, I look at the folder, uh, the file, and I see that we have a security checklist in it. Yes, the book and form is there. I go through, and yes, yes, I agree. Yes, I do. Yes, I accept that as well. Okay, so I can now move this particular folder, because I have done all of my side, I move it onto the next department. It disappears off of reception, and it will now arrive actually in our stores. So the folder now goes to stores for him to actually check them, for him to do what, uh, what he needs to actually do. Right, so if I go to show all my departments, you suddenly get a big long list, but you as a boss, this is where you are looking because you want to have an overview of all the different sections and who's not doing their job and who is. Right, at the moment, it looks like our closing department is actually not doing um, a lot of their jobs. So if I just go to closing, you will see that it will now give me a list of only the closing ones that are actually coming up and it is a long list. Right, um, if I go into any one of these, uh, let's go to Xiangui. And right, I now start looking at it and I say, hang on, um, 
yes, my quote matches my invoice total. So that, that's correct. Um, I've got a problem at the moment. I made an invoice and I made a credit note, but the boss hasn't signed off the credit note as yet. So I have a, a management. Um, I'm going to set the task for management and ask them to actually do something about it. So I highlight it and I say set task to management and I'm now going to write in um, uh, please sign off credit note and whatever the number actually happens to be. You can write the big long story as to why you had to write a credit note and all the rest of it. And we now just click on OK, save the record. Right, uh, everything else has been done. You can go through and do it. Right, that was for 26850. Right, it's now on our list. Right, uh, and it's been moved over. You've done as much as you can. So that's what this monitor screen is actually all supposed to be about. Right, so let's close this window. I now go into my monitor, my admin monitor, and administration problems. This is where you as the boss will actually be coming because you're wanting to find out all the ones that actually have problems. Uh, there's our Shangwe that we've just done now. If I double click, it says sign off the credit note. Oh, okay, I need to go and do that. So I'll go up to my debtors, processing credit notes, find the one she's talking about and uh, yeah, okay, I've checked it, I'm happy with it. I post it, close. And when I come back to here, I can now say set problem to resolved. Right, okay, save the record. Or the other one will be action needed by caller. So whoever sent this request to me as the boss, I am now sending it back to them and asking them to do something else for me. So all you would do is you write in at the bottom here what it is that you want them to actually do. And you can now say action needed by caller. I tick that one and it will now appear back on their, on their side. Right, so as the boss uh, on the administration window, you are trying to keep these all down to as um, short as possible. It's a lot of the windows in Dr. Smash. The shorter the, the uh, list, the better, because it means everyone's keeping up with their, their workload. Right. Um, we have also got this admin group objectives. It does allow you to actually go in and to set up uh, recurring meetings and things like that, which will actually um, ask people or remind people that they have a meeting that is actually coming up. So what you can do is you can, um, I'm just going to view this objective, but you will have your leader who is in charge of this. So you just basically go to your lookup and you find out who is actually in charge of it. What is it actually called? Who actually is going to be attending? Um, and then at the bottom here, you can actually put the date and time as to when the meeting actually is, how often you actually want it to be done, and then it will give you a reminder. Um, I think it's a, a day before reminder that is coming up tomorrow, and then it's actually ha um, a half an hour reminder before you actually have the meeting that the reminders actually come up. But you can set your reminder period um, if you're wanting a reminder to actually be set as well. So you, um, what will happen with that is that on when they are on their computers, it will actually come up on Dr. Smash and tell them that their productivity meeting is uh, on tomorrow. Um, it's so that they can get all their paperwork and everything together and then half an hour before it will come up and give them another reminder actually on their screen that you wanting a meeting to come through, them to come through in about half an hour for that meeting. Right, so that's your administration monitor as well.
So basically, as a boss, we have now gone through everything that you, you should be looking at and looking for in your Dr. Smash program. You're, as I've said before, keeping as many lists as possible, as short as possible, um, so that you were double checking everybody. But your profit projection is very important and your work and um, targets are actually also very important as well. We did do the paint import and the productivity the other day um, on a separate video. Um, so you should have every aspect of your company now um, covered by using the Dr. Smash system.